I, I think I'm gonna be messy for a second too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that when it comes to like Dr. Heavenly and Quad, um. y'all it's oliver twix here your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty to do the lord's work once again and we are back with an exclusive chit chat with someone who's been on married to medicine this season yes season 10 currently airing on bravo we previously had a nice nice revealing chat with the wedding planner johnny who had the pleasure of facilitating the wedding for new season newcomer sweet tea to um, Mary's Medicine vet OG, Dr. G, as we know, and he let it all out with no apologies. And so, as you guys know, I am a purveyor of reality TV, okay? I engage in the bullshit. And of course, you guys know with my history in interviewing people who were there firsthand, who can give us those firsthand tellings of our favorite reality TV pastimes. I found it appropriate to also talk to another person who was there. No one better than the right-hand lady to the newcomer, Sweet Tea, Letitia, now Lunsford. Yes, y'all, we have Sweet Tea's sister, Kanisha, here in the mix with us today to talk about all things Married to Medicine and help us get a better insight on what's going on. So, without further ado, let's welcome Kanisha. What's going on, Kanisha? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Thank you so much for joining me. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for inviting me. I, I this is just something new, and so you know, I might be a little rough around the edges, or you know, I might say something that uh, I, I do need. I do need so. <laughs> yes. I, I'm ready for whatever. How's it been? You know, you're not necessarily on the show in a starring role, but you're adjacent to someone who's on there. How's it been now? Um, having your sister, your family, even you yourself being talked about on such a mass level. It's definitely been a roller coaster ride. I mean, from whenever she first started filming, or no, when she actually started dating Dr. G. Mm -hmm. And um, I call him Gregory. But when she started dating and then to um, getting married or getting engaged, and then her talking about how she may want to do the show. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a roller coaster ride. You know, I thought that um, it would be a great opportunity to, to do, and I was going to support her. And I think that, like, I, I didn't expect all the hate. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, that I wasn't used to on social media. Yeah, yeah. It's been a lot with the introduction of Sweet Tea this season. Definitely has everyone, not only the cast, but all of us at home in much much discussion like what the fuck is going on this has never been done before so yeah this is a dynamic that's new to us all i'm pretty sure y'all too yeah yeah like it just even when i first started filming i'm like you know just trying to figure out who the ladies are and you mm -hmm. know the energy that they're bringing so um me and my sister are gemini so we kind of like try to figure out oh, we're very outgoing i think and we try to figure out everybody else's personality and uh and so sometimes we can kind of like mold into, mm -hmm. um, you know, that personality. It's still us, but it's mm -hmm. like we get molded into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so before we get to Lost in the Sauce, let's go back a little bit. Um, and tell us about Kanisha. I want to know about who Kanisha is, independent of being Sweet Tea's sister on Married to Medicine. Well, um, I am a wife, a mother, and um, I'm, I also work within the government space. Um, I'm a business oh, nice. and operations manager. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I just like to have fun. I love to travel. Like, you know, that's just my main thing. Um, I live in Taiwan for a little bit. Uh, oh, nice. I'm contracting. So I I just really love to, to travel. That's really what I love to do. And, um, you know, and, I, and I'm a big supporter when it comes to my family. Which we see on the show, you're always there for your sister, speaking up for your sister. Um, but I want to know, how would you describe the relationship you guys had before you guys popped up on our screens? Our relationship has always been good. Um, no matter, I know no matter where I go, she will always be there. Mm -hmm. uh, whether she'll be there physically, spiritually. Um, 
I know like sometimes we butt heads and then like we could be mad at each other and then I'll just call her, I'll just look at her. You know, like uh -huh. we're just it, I just need her to be there. So and it, it's it's just something she's like my safety. We know we've known each other, been um, you know, been in the same space since we've been in the womb. So, you know, our, our relationship has always been good. Yes, we do butt heads, uh, mm. <laughs> as you can yeah. see. <laughs> but uh but we have a really good relationship. And so you guys are twins. We are, yes. I'm the oldest. You know, we used, actually used to be next door neighbors. Um, oh. We, yeah, we used to have drive the same type of car. Like I had a Ford Focus in, um, in college. She also had a Ford Focus. So a lot of people like, can like to compare us, and, uh -huh. which is fine. We're used to it, but it can get hard sometimes. So it's safe to say that you and Sweet Tea are like best friends. Yes, we are. So. Your sister, your best friend, is now dating this guy who we all know now she's married to Dr. G. But take us back when she first started maybe talking to you about him and you became aware of who he is. How did you feel about your sister being in a relationship with someone who's not only a doctor, but a doctor whose past marriage was so public in the media? I, at first, I wasn't really shaky or anything. I just, I think she told me that she had DM'd him. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like why not you know like, i guess so yeah, and you can connect with people just mm -hmm. by social media and that's just something that's super easy so i'm like yeah why not like you know but i didn't expect all of this you know what i mean <laughs> like mm -hmm. i didn't expect all this i said well if you're if that's what you want to do then I'm, I'm just always being supportive like okay it's your life this is what you want to do i'm supportive which we love which we <laughs> love um, I was down in my comments and there was a post, I believe it was a post we made about Johnny talking about the wedding. And I think you came up underneath there and was responding to someone where you said like, the comment was saying how Sweet Tea was like a fan of the show, something like that. And you came down there and was like, we had never, ever seen the show before. So explain to us, what was your knowledge about Married to Medicine before you actually joined in on it? I would say, like, even when I was in college, um, I probably watched maybe the first season. Like, mm -hmm. not even the full first season. I think I it was more of, like, I watched a couple of episodes, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I and I always knew about Marriage and Medicine, but I didn't know anything about, like, the cast members or really the history. Of course, like, you see on Facebook, you'll see highlights or on YouTube mm -hmm. highlights. And that's all I knew about Marriage and Medicine. I mean, I remember, I remember when Gregory came over, and um, he told me it was telling me more about the show and I said it's still on you know <laughs> I was like yeah, they still I didn't track know <laughs> I didn't know I'm just like oh okay you know I, I didn't know that the show was even you know making it so and I think that um uh, guess initially I, I was just kind of shocked that it was even still broadcasting <laughs> oh my god no marriage to medicine <laughs> It's still here. They're still trucking along, honey. Ten seasons, ten years later, they are still here by the grace of God. Um, so how did you become involved in this season? Uh, of course, through my sister, um, just being a, a big support. Um, she, I felt that she didn't have anybody in Atlanta. I mean, of course, she has Gregory, but mm -hmm. she also didn't know a lot of people. I mean, she had some a couple of friends here and there, but ain't nobody got her back like me. So <laughs> I... I I ended up, you know, coming, flying out to Atlanta and um, that, uh, what was the engagement? Yeah, the engagement part was, party was the first time I had um, came out there. So the first time we see you, like you just said, is at Sweet Tea's um, party, kind of like almost a sip and see where all the girls are coming over to the house. Of course, they haven't been at the house since his last marriage to already cast member their friend on and off friend child. Quad, so like the girls are giving all their comments, everyone's there. Uh, we're seeing Sweet Tea, a lot of them for the first time in this dynamic. And we see you kind of like speak up and kind of get some crowd control going on. Talk us through that moment and what led up to you, you know, reacting that way on camera. Uh, I think initially, um, I think when we, when I first walked into the house, um, I met Toya and, you know, she was very welcoming. Mm -hmm. And then I sat on the couch and we were just, you know, having some, some talking and they were getting to know me and my sister. And I remember Simone, she kind of was like, you need to have it like this. She was talking about like the house. You need to have the house like this and have it like that. And I said, who are you talking to? Oh my God. <laughs> I said, who are you talking to? Like you ain't, you don't come in somebody's house and, and then saying they need to have it like, like this and like that. Like, no. 
So um, really the energy, it was just like, okay, like they're all older than us. So, you know, I, I respect my elders, but then it was just like, oh no, they come in over here talking crazy. So I said, oh, I'm gonna have to be right with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's how it really was going. So I remember them, my sister was trying to speak about um, her medical situation. And um, I think Dr. Heavenly and uh, Dr. Simone, they, they were arguing about something and my sister was trying to speak. So that's why I kind of yelled like, hey, this is her house, let her effing speak. That's why, I, I mean, that's how it was because I think the it was the energy like, oh, these have not lost their mind come up in here. You know, the, like like their mama didn't talk, talk to them about um, going to somebody's house and um, just being respectful in general. And they were bringing up quad. So it was pissing me off. And I, and it, of course, I think it was our first time. So it was more like, okay, I'm trying to figure out how this is gonna go. And um, I, I don't know. It just was kind of like, it was just weird. Whenever we walked in, it was, just, I tried to feel the energy and try, trying to be respectful. And I just was like, you know what? All best are out. I ain't trying to be respectful no more because these, these, these ladies are being very disrespectful. So that's really what it was. What can you share about how Sweet Tea was feeling? Because on camera, at least to me, it seemed like she was a little bit frustrated. And I'm pretty sure that's why you felt the need to speak up for her. But what, what can you share about what she was feeling during that time with what was going on between Heavenly and Simone and them talking about Quad? She felt disrespected. She did because um, she invited. It was her engagement party. You know, you don't come in and talk about the ex. And, you know, I, I think for filming purposes, this is why it was brought up. But, um, you know, I'll, this is her real her real life and this is her reality. And, and, they're, mm -hmm. they're, and so I think she was nervous already. This is her first all cast event. And um, I think that she was just kind of just felt disrespected. You're like, okay, this is how it's going to go. Like, um, you know, cause it, again, this is her reality and like they're storing up mess. And so I think I was kind of feeling her energy. So that's why I was like, okay, if you don't want to speak up, Leticia, then okay, <laughs> it's time for me to speak up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get into it. <laughs> like, that's how um, I, I felt that. Cause I feel like sometimes like I can feel her, how she's feeling like mm -hmm. I can feel her energy her spirit, if she's hurt. So um, I'm like, all right, is the other twin coming out and I'm gonna have to get together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next thing I wanna ask you about is a scene you actually were not there for, but I am curious to know what is your opinion on it. And this is a scene where your sister goes and has like a late night lunch with Dr. Heavenly. And to me, it looks like she's like drinking and she's like telling Heavenly all of her business about, you know, some of her frustrations with Dr. G, some of her experiences with trying to get married, how she's feeling, you know, coming into this group. What was your reaction on uh, being her sister, seeing Sweet Tea be so vulnerable and open and honest with it, heavenly in that moment? My reaction was like, no, like, no, like, no, 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 don't do it. But knowing the backstory of that, she, she, she had met Dr. 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 and she, she tried to describe her as like an auntie, like a messy auntie. So, after it aired, it then I, I, I see uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Evans uh, doing, doing whatever he wants to do. Uh, I felt that, that no, this is wrong. wrong. Like, no, like, I'm not, after, after seeing that, it's like, no, you just don't tell me your business. Like, you don't know this woman. He is the devil. <laughs> so, um, I was really upset. It's been a lot going on on social media. There's been a lot of stuff going on on social media, uh, definitely involving your sister. Yeah. So, I'm pretty sure at home you were like, oh my God, she does not need to be spilling this type of information at this time, unfortunately, right. <laughs> with all people. And she already told me about the scene, you know, prior, prior, um, before, before it aired. Air, so. so I would I say, say, like, like I think I, it really pissed, pissed me off. Like, like I was really, really angry because I like, really trust. trust. I can I tell tell it and, and she didn't she really, really know heavenly like, like that. Okay, uh, heavenly was supposedly supposed to be drinking uh, with my sister, and then come to find out, heavenly was drinking water. So it to me, it, it, like my sister, she has the right to you know do whatever as far as drinking. She can drink it however much she wants, but. Um, my sister trusting you and then you know you're to me looking like a because 
like you're trying you're only doing this to get information that's just my you know and and as a mother like i see that and i it's very disheartening especially my sister looked up to heavenly as a a strong independent like black woman who's an entrepreneur so it was very disheartening you're only doing this to get information so um and for that it's like she is a messy ass auntie you know what i mean but it's just we gotta take her to the home you know <laughs> we gotta take it to the nurse home or to the mental home oh my god <laughs> Oh my I, God. I just did not like that at all. No. Do you feel as if your sister has been manipulated in any way during this whole filming of season 10? I would say yes. Um, from just from what she told me and from what I've seen personally, yes. In in what ways do you care to share? Uh well, for once, as far as heavily kind of befriending her, um, and she really didn't want to be friends with her. It, it was just more of you were just trying to get information, trying to get be messy, and trying to uh, get a storyline out of her. And I and that's what I did not like. And even like when it came to the wedding, um, she was initially going to do the wedding at a different location, and this was before she even agreed to film. And they could not film at that location, so they had to move move the location to the Hilton location and um we were told well she told me that everything was supposed to be taken care of when it was indeed not taken care of and so that's why you saw her kind of flip out like okay 14k got to be done by 12 o'clock it's 10 it's like 10 30 11 o'clock by that time so um she's already been stressed out she's she works um she's always working she works every day a regular job like everybody else mm -hmm. and um but yeah, like that to be sprung up, sprung, to, be, to be sprung the last minute. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, she she had like pre-wedding jitters, like only a person can take so much. Before we get too deep into the actual um, drama that happened at the bachelorette party, let's get into early on that night. So Sweet Tea finally gets there and it looks like you guys are having fun. I saw some shots of her interacting with the men and you were kind of laughing at her. Walk us through the early moments of the night. Were the vibes actually vibing? Yes, the vibes were vibing. Um, when we opened the door, you had, there was men, um, I think they were in boxers and uh, we were like, oh, okay. You know, and this was kind of sprung up at the last minute. I think they-, they I knew, I'm, I'm so sorry, I knew one of the men there. One of those men there used to talk to me when I was a young girl here in Atlanta. I'm not gonna say which one, but he looked really good. <laughs> they all look real good. I When I walked in, I said, oh, okay. They were um, feeding us grapes and uh, offering us drinks. So I said, okay, you know. I yeah, one of them was definitely gay. <laughs> one of them was definitely gay. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I did not know or, you know, really, I was just more focused on my sister mm -hmm. having fun. So uh, the vibes were vibing. Like, um, they picked us up on the piano and, um, you know, we were like, okay, don't get too close. Like, calm down. So I mean, the vibe was vibing. Like, everything was going really well. Yeah. Until we get this, like, drop of a Hiroshima bomb from Johnny the Wedding Planner that an additional 14K is needed in order to make the wedding successful. Before we talk more about that moment, Kanisha, what do you feel comfortable sharing about what you knew concerning the progress of the wedding up until that point? Uh, well, I know that she was having difficulties with Johnny and um, I, I wasn't really there as far as with all the wedding plans, but you know, Johnny was taking care of it. But yeah, um, I, I know I was going back and forth with Johnny a little bit and um she i would say she was not like super happy uh with what was going on but uh um, oh, wow she she had to, to do what she had to do as far as um whenever that the wedding was moved and when johnny called ooh, all hell broke loose <laughs> right <laughs> all hell broke loose. uh that was a shock and um yeah i and I was trying to actually calm her down, um, you know, when you see me try to, like, take her phone. Because, like, I'm like, okay, let me talk to Johnny. Like, I just want you to have a good time. Like, chill out. And um, I think I was also texting Gregory at the same time. Me and him were texting back, back and forth. And so, um, and then, like, I remember Dr. Jackie, she chimed in. 
and she was like, um, she was like, everybody pitching in like, you know, a couple thousand or two thousand dollars. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> and you know, you know, damn well she wasn't about to pitch in not <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to laugh. Daughter Jackie, that is funny. <laughs> but she, you know, damn well, she might pitch in nothing. So, uh, you know, and I'm like, well, hold on. Like, let, let's, let me go talk to Johnny or see what's going on and get with Gregory because Gregory, he needs to be handling all that. I know Gregory does not want to get like involved within the wedding plans, but no, he needs to, you know, he got the money. <laughs> so he needs to get involved. So, um, yeah, that that ended up happening, and like I said, all hell broke loose. So I I just came over to like, okay, like let me let me get your phone, let me handle the situation. I just want you to have fun. And then my sister wasn't trying to hear that; she just she trying to flip on me. So. Yeah. Oh no, it got crazy. <laughs> Before we get into that crazy, you know, we gonna get there. I want to know. I want to talk about Johnny right fast. As you know, um, he came over here in the mix, and he gave us his account on his time on Married to Medicine. And I think from his chat, one can safely assume or walk away with the idea that he did a good job. That was the feedback he got from Sweet T and Dr. G. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on him feeling that way? Because I heard you just say you had to get involved due to some things your sister um, was unhappy with. There are some things you didn't find appropriate. What is your um, opinion on Johnny's involvement as a wedding planner for your sister's wedding? I would say um, I think Johnny needs to have just better time management. Don't get me wrong; he does do a great job. I, especially that he pulled off the <clears throat> wedding um, when it got moved at the last minute. So you know, he he does do a great job. I think that as far as um, just letting um, it, my sister know what was going on, what what were the plans, that was the I think the difficulty of okay, where are we at when it comes to the wedding planning? You know, it was never anything that was like set in stone. I think we we got the wedding invitations like maybe a month before the wedding, so it was just kind of like all right, like Johnny, what are we doing? But he did pull it off. So I can't say that he did pull it off, and he did a great job. And and was. Were those delays attributed to, you know, was it something he was doing, you guys were doing, Sweet T, Sweet T was doing? What was, like, the cause for, like, some of the delays during the process of wedding? I don't know shit about getting married. I've never been married, nor, uh, nor have I ever seen somebody get married. Um, but, like, I'm pretty sure it's a hectic process. Who would be responsible for it, from your opinion? Um, she so when she initially hired Johnny, she really wanted Johnny to keep her like on time uh, with everything because her doing working doing the show, she was really wanting that. Okay, like I, I hold Latisha accountable. Okay, this is what we need to do. Here. Right there, and it wasn't really like that. Um, my my sister had to like constantly hit him up instead of um vice versa. So mm. it was kind of like that. Um, and I I think that when it came to Yes, I think it's a little bit of both of them uh, as far as communication, too. I gotcha. Think. Yeah. Gotcha. No, we love that. So, um, finishing off with Johnny, what is your reaction to him playing or recording um, from that night um, that he played over here on the, on In The Mix? Gagged us all. It was a conversation between Dr. G, it seemed like the the women from the cast, I think you could hear like sweet sweet tea in the background screaming and him like recording this conversation. What is your reaction to seeing the wedding planner um have that type of media <laughs> in his possession? Um I, I actually I'm kind of glad he did it. <laughs> oh wow, really? I'm kind of glad he did it. I mean, I'm not mad at the fact that he he recorded it. I mean, yeah, I guess it, it can be looked at as unprofessional, but um, I think he was he was more in business mode. Like, okay, I got to have this going. I have to have this uh, wedding plan. And, um, you know, and I think he said that he knew that he was, um, he might be reported. I'm not, I don't remember the interview. He might be reported be only because she had him on speakerphone. So, um, you know, I'm kind of glad that he did because like he actually told the story better than I could, to be honest. Uh, really? Because Johnny was like in business mode and we were in bachelorette party mode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would say that um I mean I think I think it was okay. Um and then I think I heard it heavenly on, on that on that recording. So I I, I was kind of glad. Did you hear heavenly on that recording? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so I was kind of glad, like, okay, she's trying to show all this concern, but in the back, <laughs> you know, when we get to film and you over here uh, talking about how this marriage is going to fail. So, um, I, and that's why I was kind of like, well, I'm kind of glad that he, because I, I record certain things, even professionally, I record things. Yeah. And um, you always got to have your receipts. You know what I mean? Like, so I was kind of like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm glad he kind of recorded it. And then when he actually came out and, and said what really happened, he was right. He, I ain't gonna lie, he was right on the money. He was. Wow, you are co-signing Johnny's story. Johnny got a lot of backlash on social media um, as it relates to what he decided to play and tell over here when he interviewed with us. But you are co-signing everything he said. I am co-signing, yeah. Wow. When we initially saw the video, it was like, um, I, I asked uh, my sister, I said, well, you know, do you think he said something out the way? She said, no, I don't, I don't really think so. Um, she didn't feel like he said anything out the way. It was just okay. He was right. I mean, he was in business mode. We were in bachelor party mode. We had a couple of drinks, you know. So he he actually told it better than I could. So moving on in the episode, Johnny delivers his bombshell, and then we see you and your sister experience this big blow up. What do you believe led to the big showdown we saw that occurred between? how your sister reacted to what you are saying was just you innocently trying to help? I think it was just a little bit of everything. You know, when you're planning a wedding, I remember when I planned my wedding, um, I was just kind of, I was like Bridezilla, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like everything is on me. My husband wasn't involved that much, so I felt everything was on me. And then with the filming, um, you know, the ladies, they're constantly taking jabs at her. And, um, you know, it just, it got to be a, a lot. Her also still working every day. Uh, she didn't really take a lot of time off. So whenever she was filming, she was also with the laptop mm -hmm. <laughs> working. So I think it was just, everything kind of got to her. And it was just like, you know, the 14K was like, what? You know, it, it, it just, it just took her, took her there. It took her there. So again, you saw me be trying to be supportive. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and I, and even after that big blow up, uh, well, we, during that big blow up, I went into the bathroom. I remember Toya and Phaedra, and then I was like, get out. <laughs> I was just like, get out. <laughs> Let me talk to my sister. <laughs> oh, my so, God. You know, because they are trying to calm her down. But I'm like, y'all, you know, you guys are constantly taking jabs at her. Like, you know, she, you guys are kind of looking foreign to her. To me, you're looking foreign. I don't know. I don't know you. She doesn't really know you that well. And um, she's in a, you know, emotional state. So I said, well, let me talk to her. And so we went to the bathroom and um, I told her, I said, you know, everybody has um, wedding jitters, nervous about uh, getting married, planning a wedding. It's just, uh, she's like, it's she's crying. She's like, it's just a lot going on. It's just too much. And I'm like, you're only human. Okay, so with you saying a lot of her frustrations could be attributed to what she was experiencing with the wedding and the ladies, does any part of you feel betrayed that she projected that anger on you when she responded to you in that way did any part of you feel like oh my god whoa i'm here with you you know why are you talking to me this way initially yes um i was like you said I, i'm like well, don't talk to me i don't care about these cameras because uh me and you we can go in like that's just how we are and um you know i didn't care about the cameras being around and um i'm like i, like I told her i was like i'm truly trying to help you out but I think she was just in so much of an emotional state that it just was like, okay, everything. I'm like, right now, I'm just kind of losing my mind, you know? So um, I I understood how she felt and I was just trying to be there for her. But, but you know what? I thought about it um, after the fact and after watching that, I said, mm -hmm. I think the reason why she went off on me like that is because she feels safe with me. You know what I mean? I got you. She feels safe with me. And like, she can... She can do whatever with me because, like, I, I can take it. Okay. And, you know, we're, we're twins, so it's like, you know, we're, we're always going. We've had big blowouts before, and, like, I take it out on her the worst whenever I'm upset with her. But, you know, I feel the safest with her. And so with this now being shown in real time, did that have any impact with you guys as it relates to where you stand today? No, it didn't have any impact. Um, oh, after good. we went into that bathroom and we were talking, like, it was squashed in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was squashed in. Like, you know, it, 
And then, like, we were able to talk about it the next day. But it was squashed then at, at the bachelorette party. We love to hear that. That's what's up. <laughs> so the crazy night continues when suddenly um, Quad, the ex-wife um, of the man that your sister's about to marry, walks in. What is your reaction to see her basically crash your sister's bachelorette party? I, I remember thinking whenever I seen her come in, I'm like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> like, I just like, what is this bullshit? Mm -hmm. And I don't like, um, I, I just didn't like the way it was. It didn't feel like authentic. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't feel authentic. I remember even um, Simone, she was leaning over to me, trying to calm me down. And like, mm -hmm. hey, like, you know, you, you got to let Alicia handle this part. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> like, I, I'm sitting in my seat like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at this bullshit. <laughs> so, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to intervene either because, again, um, my sister, she has to answer for, you know, my reaction. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I, so to speak, I'm like the passenger. She's the driver. So mm -hmm. I, I'm letting her drive. And I'm like, okay, if we coast it, we coast it. That's all, all I can do. <laughs> That's all I can do. But I did lean over and I'm like, you want me to kick this, this uh, lady out or what? So, um but yeah, like that, and it, it didn't really feel authentic. I'm just kind of like, like, what is this? So, mm -hmm. but yeah, have had it been a real life situation as far as her walking in, she would have got thrown out like uh, Uncle Phil did Will Smith. <laughs> I would have threw her out. Oh my god! <laughs> it's easy to assume that Sweetie and Quad will have some type of tension, just you know, because they've. One's been with them, one is about to be with them, or is with them. You know, that people will just assume there'll be a cat fight. But ironically, it seems as if Sweet Tea is embracing Quad being there. You being there actually seeing it. What was your reaction to see to seeing them interact with each other for the first time? I wasn't really shocked or anything like that because um, I know that she doesn't want to have any bad blood or mm -hmm. um, she doesn't want to ha just have that... Um, you know, why, why does she have to go off on the, the ex-wife? And she doesn't want to have that type of energy with uh, the ex. So it was more of like, okay, like, I'm just, she wanted to be nice. And um, there's, because she doesn't know her. She doesn't know who she is. Right. And, and um, I know with Gregory, Gregory had told her before that she does not really want to have any type of relationship with Quad. So, yeah. I mean, that, and so it, when she wanted to just be calm, okay like she didn't want to give her that that energy because i know that's what everybody was looking for like we we knew that that's what everybody was looking for because the bachelor party was so out of this world chaotic is there anything that we did not see that happened that night that you care to share ah uh, so if you guys again y'all only see a little smidgen of that um i know before quad even came in i think before i even went to the bathroom uh to my sister mm -hmm. i know like i think i went off on simone i think i went off on dr alicia <laughs> like, i i just was like mad like you know as far Why? as because i felt like with that fourteen thousand dollars, like my sister she's she's like losing her mind out here and then like everybody they're looking at it as if like you know oh it's like you know it's it's funny like um like i i just didn't feel welcome it didn't feel like it's something that i would do as far as like a, a bachelorette party like i think um i think i i thought i actually thought someone was talking about my sister and i was like i know them. you ain't talking about my sister my face <laughs> but she had she actually was not talking about my sister but i, I was getting ready to talk to my own now oh my god <laughs> she was not talking about my sister but you know what i'm saying i'm like on guard because i i don't know everything yeah. and it's like you know if anybody thinks that it's a joke because this is her real life. This is her reality. Like I'm ready to come for your head. That's that's just how it was. <laughs> so you guys didn't do that part. So how do you guys decompress after moments like this? What is the phone conversation like the next day? Like, girl. I think the next day we were at my mom's hotel. We were just telling my mom a little bit what what happened. So it's like, um, I I just kind of tell her like. Okay, I didn't like this. I don't trust this person. I don't trust like you know, Doctor Heavenly. I didn't. <laughs> I, I it's more like I, I always ask how she feels, and mm -hmm. um, and I tell her my opinion of um, 
what's going on or what do I see. So it, mm. it's kind of like, like you said, it's like, girl, let me tell you about this this person. I, I don't like them at all because I feel like they're not for me. And um, I, I think we even did a scene. At, we actually did a scene. They didn't they didn't uh, film that part, but I think during the um, the rehearsal, we actually were at the hotel doing the rehearsal. And um, and I told her how I, I felt about the ladies. I said, the first thing I said was, you should, these are not your friends. Like, mm. they're not your friends. And um, and I can see that. Like, I don't know them like that, but, like, they're not your friends. So they could be your coworkers, acquaintances, whatever, but I don't I feel like they're your friends. You know, I've seen her be friendly with um, Toya. Do you feel like Toya also fits in that category of not being a friend of Sweet Tea? I don't know. I'm still, like, I, I, I like Toya, um as a person but I, as far as their reaction i'm still trying to figure that out i'm still mm. you know I'm, I'm not sure if i would say friend but i would say like acquaintance you know somebody that you can um, hang out with every now and then okay okay i mean that's better than the enemy you know that's way better I than the enemy like an enemy no but i feel like she has not done anything you know of course she throws her shade but i don't feel like she's done anything like you know personally so who do you feel from the cast have been supportive 100% um, of your sister or the most supportive of your sister? I feel like Dr. Simone has been very supportive. Um, you know, whenever she, just how she talks about her, you know, like Mama Simone, and even um, Simone has talked to me before about, you know, filming. And, um, you know, I remember even like the little things that Simone will do, like I remember during that, um, what do you call the engagement party, and we had like some food and we had some ribs. And here's uh, Dr. Simone, she was like, Girl, don't eat those ribs on national television. <laughs> like, you know, she, like, she'll, she's the one that will, like, okay, make sure you do right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and I, I like that. She'll try to look out for you. Everybody else, I can't. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't say that. Well, on to a better time. Um, I can't wait to get into it with you about Sweet Tea's rehearsal for her wedding. You were there, as well as other members from the family, the whole bridal party, the groom's party. I don't know the right term because I ain't never been married. Um, but how was that day of filming for you guys? I'm sure it had to be exciting, definitely better than some other days you guys had been on camera together. Walk us through what that rehearsal was like. It was it was all right. Uh, I would say during the rehearsal, um, you know, the family was there, so um, of, of course, um, it was very inviting. Like you know, okay, well, I'm with my family, with the friends, like like everything was real chill, and like everybody, I felt like I was having a good time. And um, I mean, I it, it wasn't nothing like you know, it was no drama. Thank God, it was no drama. So I, I like that they were highlighting us as our family being supportive. So that's, but other than that, it, it, it just was like a good cruise, I would say. Good. No, it felt that way watching it. It seemed like <laughs> Sweet Tea felt very comfortable mm -hmm. in that environment, which I'm pretty sure, you know, it was her friends, her family. It's all about her celebrating her, her, her moment. Um, it was a beautiful scene to watch. It was. Um, so moving on to the wedding day, of course, it would not be a day of love if it had not been filled with any moments of chaos, okay? It would not be a wedding day if there were no moments where things did not go right. And the first thing, the most talked about thing, one of the most talked about things was Dr. Heavenly being left off of the guest list. Kanisha, what can you tell us about what led up to Dr. Heavenly being removed off the list? of people permitted into the wedding. Okay. Um, well, we I knew that she was going to be left off the wedding uh, after we were done <laughs> filming that engagement party. Our friend who was sitting there, if you've seen it in the scene, Jasmine, she was in the scene. And um, it, it kind of looked like as if uh, Jasmine was just being quiet, but Jasmine was not very quiet. Um, oh. Whenever I came out that bathroom, Jasmine was talking to Heavenly, and she said Heavenly was trifling. <laughs> for for just speaking about like the marriage and then um also we talked i think she was addressing um that scene where leticia was um confiding in um dr heavenly and they were just both drinking 
And um, I, my my friend, she was um, actually addressing that with Heavenly. And then um, whenever we left, um, Jasmine said that she was going to take her off the wedding list. So, um, and that's what happened. <laughs> so it was basically, and you said Jasmine's her name? Mm-hmm. It was basically Jasmine informing you guys about what the lady, specifically Dr. Heavenly, had been saying while you guys were away and they were still in that room having conversations about right the about relationship. My, mm-hmm, about the relationship and then also addressing whenever um, they were drinking heavily and uh, my sister were drinking. And um, and so she, after we left, we were in the, in the car and so... Jasmine told us that, okay, Heavily is not for you, and um, she needs to be taken off the wedding list. And then my sister agreed. So once Heavily actually gets there on the wedding and she's trying to get in, what was the information you guys were receiving on your end, um, if you were aware of at all about Heavily trying to get into the wedding? I was not aware at all, really. I really wasn't aware. Because I, we were still, we were just, it, it was my sister's day. And, you know, uh, am I really going to think about um, everybody else? No, I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the wedding. My sister having a beautiful day. I, I can care less about the guests right now. <laughs> so um, I didn't know all that was really going on, to be honest, at the door. I mean, I, I think I have seen her. Um, and you know what? Whenever she came in, I didn't I didn't even see that, that part. I don't know when exactly she came in during the wedding. Again, I'm just so focused on my sister and everybody else. I don't even remember um, heavily even like coming into the wedding. <laughs> mm-hmm. How was a wedding day for you from your perspective? This is your sister's big day that she's been looking forward to for some time now. Um, how was it for you seeing it finally fulfilled? I was very happy for her. Um, I just, just to see her happy, it made me happy. Um, I know like with the filming, that, that was taking a lot of our time, like our personal time. But mm-hmm. uh, but I was really happy. Like, I was crying because, like, my sister has always wanted to get married. I actually thought she was going to be the first to get married. And um, and I think she kind of looks up to me because I have my family as well. And she's always wanted that. And she finally, you know, got it. And I was just so happy for her. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know, how do you guys feel about... These precious moments, these lifetime moments, your sister getting married um, for the first time, her bachelor party, her, her bachelorette party. How do you feel about these moments, which usually are intimate memories for people being forever cemented in reality TV and people, you know, having so much to say about you guys' personal time or what is supposed to be you guys' personal time? I I would say I feel that um, I I think some moments like we were like kind of robbed like uh, on the per some of the personal times I wanted to get with her um, I was kind of robbed because of the timing and the filming and and so um, but it was it was a different feeling whenever I, once I seen it on television it was like okay like um, you know I can I can say that I'm glad that it is on television for everybody to see. And um, my sister, she really like you know made her dream come true. So mm-hmm. I would say, um, but it, but during that time, it was just like okay, I really would like to talk to her about this, and um, you know just from my experiences, and like I felt like I was just kind of robbed on that part. <laughs> yeah, no, I I know that got, that that has to suck a little bit. Yeah, because like even her, she was just kind of like, oh well, um, it was certain things she wanted to do, and she didn't get a chance to do, and. Um, like I always told her, I said, well, you can always get remarried in Bali or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, do do something more intimate because she only wanted to do something really small and intimate. And that's what initially the wedding was supposed to be. And so now the show is out. The people are watching and they are chiming in. And your sister has been the main and and your sister has been the main focal point for many of hot topic discussions around Mary's Man's season. What has been your reaction to seeing how people have reacted to your sister's presence on the show this season? Because the, the internet, you know, the internet spells, spares none. The internet spares none. You're right. Um, it's very hurtful. <laughs> like my my reaction was like like 
okay, like, where are you guys getting all this stuff from? Like, you know, I, did we not watch the same scene? Or um, and it was very, like, overwhelming, so to speak. It was very overwhelming. And then it's like, immediately, just, I've, I've been doing uh, on Instagram for a while, so I immediately just want to respond, you know? And um, I had to get used to that. Like, okay, I don't need to respond because, like, people, they're, they're just going to say these hurtful, mean things, or they're just... Um, you know, or they're they're just on here for clout. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so I, I I had to calm it down and be like, all right, let me just chill out. But I mean, it has been really hard. Like, it has been hard. And then, like, I can tell that my sister, she's not used to this either. So um, mm-hmm. I'm calling her, and I'm like, okay, I'm more about, I'm more worried about her mental state. Like, okay, how are you doing? Don't look at social media, because it, it's um, because I felt like. It, I think that first week that it aired and I saw like all the negative and like, it's sad to say, but a lot of the negative speaks out more than the positive. And, yeah. um, you know, just thinking about it, it was just really hurtful. You know what I mean? Like, and especially coming from black women and, um, and then it's like the, the whole gold digger vibe. It was like, like, come on, like a gold digger, like the things that I did see uh, that my sister was doing, I'm like, okay, a gold digger, a gold digger does not work. She works. And then um, she cooks. She makes sure that uh, Gregory's taken care of. Like, I, I don't see the gold digger vibes, but okay. We're going to run with that narrative, and we're just going to, like, ride into the sunset with it. And, like, again, like, I was very hurt by it. I was just like, okay. And, like, even my family members, like, they they went in, you know, like. Yeah. Whatever. And I've addressed some people in the comments, and um, and I had to tell them, like, okay, like, Again, this is her reality. These women have been doing this for 10 years. And like, I feel like everything is real to her. So everybody's like, oh, she needs to get thicker skin. And, um, and, but I'm like, nobody else, like, well, of course they've done this, but like a person coming into this and they've never done this before, like, you know, you, like, you can kind of, can you give them grace? But, you know, like you said, the internet spares nobody. So <laughs> can you give her some type of grace? <laughs> so, <laughs> So I was just more worried about her mental health. And because like, I know my mental health was like, you know, like I, I got PTSD too. <laughs> so I was, yes. I was just like, you know, oh Lord, like, and um, I think it, I, I got, I got to see the comments. I, I just kind of felt sick. I kind of felt sick to my stomach actually. Yeah. You know, these reality TV shows <laughs> are shows to so many of us. Um, and I don't think sometimes the viewing audience, when they're on social media, they're keeping in mind that these are people with real life feelings and their own truths. And sometimes their comments can come off very harsh and hurtful. Um, and I'm pretty sure if the shoe was on the other foot and they were placed in Sweet T's position, you know, they wouldn't want people saying, right. They won't. They would. They wouldn't want nobody saying any of that about them, and they too would feel very potentially, you know, depressed or down about it. Um, so yeah, I, me and my friends over here, when we were talking about the show, that's something that I kept talking about. Like I was like, I can only imagine what Sweet Tea is going through right now. This is her first time doing anything like this. You know, this is her first time in the public space, and she's getting this level of reaction. What I thought to be a negative one. You know, on her first day of school, it can't be easy at all. It just can't be. Right, yeah. Like, um, you know, just looking back on it, I, I was very just like, again, I told you I was sick to my stomach. I was just like, hey, I can't believe that, you know, there are these, there is there are so many people in this world. Like, my mama always told me that, you know, there are a lot of people out there that are not for you. And they're, they're on this... Um, you know, they, they can be like demons, so to speak. So mm-hmm. in social media, that's how I'm like, oh, look at all these demons out here. And, you know, it's like, again, it's disheartening because I see a lot of it's black women. So um, I I just was like, wow. And then like my sister's a veteran. So as a, I'm also a veteran, we both in the Air Force together. So it's just like, you know, hey, you know, I, I, I served in Afghanistan twice. And I'm like, man, like I've fought for my country. And it's like, you know, for my sisters to also do the same in, like, hey, this this is what it has to be. Like, it's bad. You know, like, I, I just was kind of shocked. Yeah. What has been your reaction to seeing what her castmates have said about her on social media since the show has been airing this season? Because it's been a lot going on. It's been a lot going on. Um, Two people in particular that have been running their mouth. 
And um, I, 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 I say that it, it's very disheartening again um, when I see Dr. Heavers YouTube, and um, and I saw that my sister had been friends with um, Heavenly in the beginning. And then for Heavenly to like, you know, body shame her and to, um, you know, make, make fun of her and talk about her, her medical issues. That was just, you know, even even if Leticia is an enemy to you, which I, I have no idea what uh, Leticia has done to Heavenly, but why speak that way about a little girl? Like she's just like she say, like Allie Heavenly likes to say, she calls her a little girl. Why even speak that way about a little girl? And, um, you know, again with the ex, um, I I seen that she's uh, thrown some shade, but um, which I don't understand why, because she's not really a big factor in Leticia's life. So just to see that how she's trying to make fun of my sister, and um, you know, I, I just don't I don't have any respect for her, and you know, it's really sad to watch. Really is, you know, it's when I seen that I just kind of was like, okay, like I don't see anything that my sister has done to you. So, I mean, if you want to be the mean girls and, um, you know, as old as you are, then that's fine. So be it. Because, um, like, I'm, I'm thinking that you, you like, like, in Dr. Heavenly, you're supposed to be like a, um, a TT. And you're supposed to be like, you know, and then, like, I look at Jackie, like, she's supposed to be the mother of the church. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and so when I see the shade, I'm like, I'm looking for somebody to have some sense, somebody to have that, uh, that wisdom. And I, I don't see it. I don't see it. And then when I see, um, I see Dr. Hemley, she talks about Dr. Hemley University. Um, you know, I feel like it's, it's, it's BS. It's bullshit. Um, I feel like she's trying to build Dr. Hemley University off my sister's back. You don't do that. And especially somebody that um, actually looked up for you, to you, you don't do that. And uh, my mama has taught me well to not even respond to, to to no mess like that you know don't even mess with people like that because you know they're not right in the head and you just leave them where they are where they are Woo! okay oh uh, <laughs> kanisha baby you just laid it all out oh my god <laughs> all right so this is you guys' first time in reality tv this is, of course, her first season, her first time on television, her, her first time married. There's so many firsts. Is there any positivity um, you're able to pull from this? If so, what is it? Um, the positivity, I would say that we are, me and my sister, we're working on something as far as um, we're trying to, to do tea. Um, whenever I was in Taiwan, um, my sister, she really loved the tea in Taiwan. And then with her, her basically with her medical issue, she um, enjoyed like chai tea and, you know, different, different um, um, healthy, like healthy teas. So I would say like we're, we're working on something like that. That's like the only positive I see in it though. You know, we're just working on something we're, um, to, to build my business and her business. And then, um, you know, I told her she doesn't have to stick around forever. You know what I mean? Like, I know that this is something that um, you're just trying to get a feel, feel of, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is not the only uh, gateway to success. So um, I would say, like, okay, build your platform, and then if, when you're ready to pack your stuff up, you can go. <laughs> like, you can go. But um, I, I, I say to hell with your low vibrational energy. I say to hell with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, to hell with it. <laughs> like, I, I ain't got time for mess. Like, everybody... Since COVID, like, you know, we, we can be gone tomorrow. So, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, you ain't got to deal with this. You really don't. You don't need it. And, yeah. Do you see you and your family, your sister, Dr. G, continuing on on Married to Medicine for years to come? I don't see it, to be honest. I don't. Really? <laughs> I was like, I don't see it. Do you, do, do you think it's about to be a one and done? She hasn't decided yet. She hasn't decided yet, <laughs> but um, I, I do think she should do another season. I do, <laughs> but um, I don't think it's a, I, I, I truly don't feel it's a one and done, but again, she hasn't decided, but 
I do feel that she should be released another season. She hasn't decided as in they've asked her back for another season or she don't know if they did ask her back, she would say yes or no. Which one is it? If they if they are going to ask her, she doesn't know if she's going to say yes or no. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So totally. She doesn't know. And, and for me, like, I feel like, okay, um, do you really want to deal with this? Because I'm all about family and mm -hmm. um, all about just, like, working on your self-care. Like, I'm, I'm all about that. So if this is not bringing that into your mm -hmm. world, and I know that she wants to have a family, and I, I don't know, like, how um, like how Toya and Simone did it. I, I don't know how they did it. But, um, you know, when it comes to raising children and all that, like, you know, I, I have a son, too. It's just like, in my opinion, I'm like, I don't know if, if I would want my children to grow up around that that type of attention. So that's just my opinion. No, that and she makes... wants to have a family. So that's why I'm like, I'm like, mm, mm. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> no, that makes total sense to me. Um, My last question for you, Kanisha, is... You know, you guys are still real people. You guys are still sisters. She's still married. You guys are still a real life family. How has this show and the drama around it impacted you guys in real time? Um, I wouldn't say it's impacted a lot as of yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like whenever I like, I, I was just in Texas with my sister, and like you know, people were recognizing her, and then also me. And um, I, it hasn't really made a big impact as of yet. I think that the impact has to come from us. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what um, we're working on. Um, but as far as with, uh, just with the fans, uh, just only with the fans, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, just as far as the fans go, like, that's the only impact that I can kind of, like, oh, okay, you know, people are recognizing who she is. Okay, and I got to get a, a little messy just a little bit before you go. I, I want to know. How do you feel about the future of you and your sister and her new husband, Dr. G? I say we have a good future. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I would say we do have a really a good future. I mean, I'm looking forward to, I mean, even like when I see my son, like he calls um, Gregory Uncle G. And, mm. um, you know, like I'm just looking for all of us to have a good time and to, to be a family and I don't know, like that's really and then us traveling as family. Like, you know, that's that's really what I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, just going out for dinners and, you know, even like bringing my husband along. So I am just looking to the, the family aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like it, it was it was a little bit difficult at first to um I remember when Gregory had initially came to the house mm -hmm. to meet all of us. Uh well actually to meet my mom. And like, you know, <laughs> Gregory was really scared. I could tell that he was really nervous and scared. <laughs> and um, we were like cooking, uh, my sister was cooking some food. And um, I, it was just like the, the tension and the energy. I can like feel a pin drop. <laughs> Why? Um, Why was that tension? My mama, my mama is different, okay? <laughs> my mom is like very assertive. She don't play no games. Like, mm -hmm. so she's like, like looking at Gregory, like what you want with my daughter? Like. Mm -hmm. And so I can tell that, that that was the type of energy my mom was giving. <laughs> and um, I was like nervous for Gregory. Like, <laughs> I, I was nervous for him. Like, but uh, but my mom welcomed him with open arms eventually. <laughs> uh huh. And, um, you know, again, like my mom, my mom welcomed him in. I was like, whoo, thank God. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, okay, thank God. And then, um, you know, now we're able to do family stuff together. So, yeah, you know, it's. It's not awkward or anything like that. So it, it's, it's been good. Will we see you in any upcoming episodes the rest of Married to Madison this season? You, I, you'll only see me probably, I think they have like a med um, gala. Mm -hmm. So um, you'll see me in that. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything that we did not get a chance to talk about as it relates to you being a part of Married to Madison this season? I think we got everything. I think. I think we got everything. I think we got everything. But you know that that I I think I'm gonna be messy for a second too. <laughs> I think that when it comes to like Dr. Heavenly and Quad, um, you know, just making fun of my sister, I just I don't know. Like I I feel like Quad is trying to use my sister as a storyline. Let's just be real. <laughs> like let's just. Let's Why do you feel that way? 
Because I, I, whenever I see her, I think whenever I see it, like even during the bachelorette um, party, it just like, again, I, it didn't feel like it was authentic. It just didn't feel that way. Like, and then when I see you go on, you when you're not, the camera is not in front of you, but you're, you're on your own platform or, um, you know, some, somebody else is sending me something um, that you did or to make fun of my sister. I'm like, well, why? Like, you know, you look pressed, you look real pressed and you look like you need a job to be honest. And, um, I mean, even my sister told me that Dr. Heavily said that you, in order for Quad to come up to that bachelorette party, Quad must really leave the check. And that's, that's come from Heavily's mouth. And so like, when my, um, whenever I saw the watch what happened live and, um, you know, I just, I just felt like, okay, like my sister don't need this check because she, she had the life that she, she wanted to live. And, and you're trying to like basically sustain and keep that, uh, keep your lifestyle. And again, like, you know, you're, you're referencing my sister, but why? If you're, if you're not pressed, then why even mention? Now I do, now I do have to play devil's advocate just a little bit. I, and they said this publicly, which is why I don't mind saying it publicly. The people did feel like when Sweet Tea's home video dropped, um, and she said something about getting the demons out. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now let me address that. <laughs> let me address that. Okay. I, I, I see how people can take it that way. I, I see that, but um, I I felt that she was saying that because just like you go into a, a apartment or a new house, you rent or you buy whatever, you got to cleanse. You just say you got to cleanse the house. Okay. I think, I don't know how long that, you know, they've been divorced. I don't know how long, but I know it's been some years. Um, so that's what she was really re referring to. Um, because Gregory could have had other women in the house. You know what I mean? Like they've been divorced. Um, he could have had a, another lady in that house. Um, you know, you, you just cleanse the house. But, you know, people are going to take, take it how they want to take it. But, you know, I feel like it was a so you saying that they are being slightly overly sensitive because Sweet Tea did not intend for the demon line to be about them. She was not re referencing Quad. She was just referencing anything that could have happened before her. Right. Exactly. You know. Okay. And, and, and I, I get how people can take it. But again, like they've been divorced for years. My sister did not know the house. Like, you know, Gregory, he didn't have like, um, you know, a lot of furniture in the house. Like, you know. So my sister was, she was actually trying to like make it, you know, the house a home. So mm -hmm. again, she had to cleanse, you know, exercise some demons in that book. So, and, um, and, and that's okay. Like, but people are going to take it however they want to take it. People just, they vibe off that. So I, I guess that's really what it was. Kanisha, you have done such a great job, girl. Is there anything else you want to say to us before I let you go? I think that's it. I think that's it. Hopefully, you guys, if my sister decides to um, do another season, I, I, oh, I actually will be there for the reunion, too, so. <laughs> oh, you go to the reunion. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going I'm to a, I'm a come. I'm going to come. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny should leave your boxing gloves at the house, okay? <laughs> well, I, I, I got a clearance, so I, I can't do all that, but, um, but I, I'll, I'll come bearing gifts. Okay, come on, gifts. We like gifts. It's perfect for the Christmas season. Yeah, I got I got one, especially for Dr. Heavenly. Ooh, all right. Uh, Kadisha, we thank you so much for joining us over here in the mix. I'm so thankful um, that you spent this time with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Like, this, this was great. I had a good time. All right, y'all, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, please check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification button so you know when I'm going live and posting new content. Until next time, guys, be sure to pray and kegel. Bye. Oh.